check engine light on, check gauge light on, and this is the most telling right here, guys. No oil pressure as far as the gauge. Now, we've already checked the oil outside, guys. I told y'all, or oh, I've uh, repeated countless times how you should not even start a car if you're dealing with things such as oil leaks or uh, no oil pressure. So with the no oil pressure, you basically have to go off the complaint uh, from the customer okay so but i tend to check oil before i start a car if i'm dealing with those type of complaints so i'm almost certain the check gauge light on is because the computer sees uh, no oil pressure now that oil pressure signal come from the oil pressure sensor all right this is a hemi guys um this car is gonna likely gonna have an oil temperature sensor and an oil pressure sensor okay now that is pretty much what's used to determine or help calculate if the engine is equipped with the wrong grade of oil it obviously have uh it would have mds solar noise and things like that uh vvt setup uh that will act as a snitch tattletale okay so I, i'm speculating right now i'm about to go under the hood and verify all this but with this being a hemi and with this uh, having low oil pressure to gauge on, but I have oil in it and it's checking the light on. I'm suspecting P0520, guys. That stands for oil pressure uh, sensor problem. Now, you can also have uh, a P0521, I think that is, where the that's the code name, uh, incorrect oil usage. That would not set a check the light on. So... So if the check engine light on you likely you may have an oil pressure code based off the fact that I see no oil pressure. Okay? So but again the no the wrong incorrect oil fault code will not set a check engine light. So in a sense speculating talking about it guys, I'm gonna hook up my scan tool. We're gonna go check the computer and we're gonna also go uh we're gonna go under the hood and do some more talking guys because um yes, this is a what I think 0708 1500 with a Hemi. The 3.6 wasn't even out in 07. Okay, I want to say the 3.6 showed up in 2011, especially on the caravan. But this year model 0708 had options: uh, V8 uh, 4.7 or V6 3.7, or of course this V8 5.7 Hemi. And that's what this one is equipped with. All right, based on the symbols on the or the symbols on the side of the truck. Okay, guys, enough talking. Let's go out here and find out where we at where we stand let's get it all right guys we're back uh have this truck on the computer so 07 ram 1500 57 hemi v8 mds okay we got uh yellow in three boxes the one i'm concerned with is the check engine light why is it on guys let's go up to here to dtc and yes just as i figured p1521 guys which stands for incorrect engine oil type this particular engine calls for 05w20 guys and i have another fault code p0520 stands for engine oil pressure sensor circuit okay now we've talked about this already guys there's an oil temp sensor on this car and an oil pressure uh switch that uh typically was used to help determine if the wrong weight of oil is in the crankcase guys so <laughs> these are like tattletale signs but this particular code would not turn the light on however this particular code will so what i'm gonna essentially end up doing is or what you should do is run a <sighs> oil pressure test guys yes that's exactly what you should do now a lot of us go off the assumption that oil pressure is there is just the device that deliver that signal uh, is not there so a lot of people guess at an oil pressure switch or sensor and I have from time to time engaged in that and 90% of the time I'll be right but I cannot sit here and tell you to do that so <laughs> uh, you probably should uh, do an oil pressure test but I am going to write up oil pressure switch and uh, I keep getting them confused guys I gotta get my uh, language right okay um, and the oil temperature sensor all right so guys stay tuned hold tight don't go anywhere i'll be right back all right guys as you can see the emblem now well, let's go under the hood guys uh five seven hemi okay y'all saw the fault codes now typically what we do what we end up replacing 
is uh this oil sending unit i think you can see the oil sending unit now the oil temperature switch is down there somewhere i really will have to let it up for you guys to see that but uh guys the proper way to do this if you got no oil pressure on a gauge the real sure way to do this is to remove the sending unit and go in place with a gauge a mechanical gauge okay and then start the car and see if you're getting oil pressure but the mere fact that we was running and there was no knocking or there was no noise or anything like that uh, but i don't want you to go by that <laughs> i highly recommend that you uh to just this just to verify that you're getting oil pressure again the engine's making no noise i can uh feel lubrication as far as removing the um removing the oil filler cap you can't really look down in there but i did not do that so but i highly recommend you do that but like i say what i'm gonna end up doing is replacing those two sensors and i will likely change the oil no matter the condition of the oil number one it's obviously the wrong grade of oil guys because that fault code showed up and that code is stored in the memory all right not it will not turn the light on the light is on because of the oil pressure sensor the pcm detects a problem out of that circuitry okay so guys i'm gonna write up an estimate i'm not sure what they're gonna do but i will let y'all know oh righty guys no need for a part two guess what showed up all right yes got my oil temperature sensor here and my oil pressure uh, sensor switch here okay so we need to get both of these on we need to change the oil to make sure the only way you're gonna really make sure the correct oil is in it is if you put it in it yourself <laughs> okay that's exactly what i plan to do so let's go back to the truck i have the truck up in the air guys all right as you can see yes uh, 1500 ram now these parts that i'm about to replace is real easy to do guys in fact they are located right here they're both of them right in the same location on just about every hemi engine okay now some application it's a little harder to get to but this one is extremely easy all right and i am going to do both some people most people do them both they don't want to deal with one and both is typically not the problem but in this case <sighs> over the years we've grown accustomed to just replacing them both uh to take away any kind of risk all right so it's fairly easy i don't know if y'all want to hang around and watch me do it it's no big deal just put a socket on it and unscrew them all right so let's get it 